Hi guys, this is App Unwrapper. I'm here with Getz on iOS and I'm excited to give it a try. Enjoy! Ah, a young adventurer, isn't it so? Greetings! Come in, come in! Have this spare seat at my table. I don't bite. I may not strike you as one, but I was once an adventurer myself. But lately I'm more into the business of telling adventures rather than swinging the sword. How about it, hmm? Give an old man an excuse to have something to drink and relive some memories, will you? I promise you won't be disappointed, because the story I'm about to tell you is one of a kind. Of course, it is about knights and kings, battles and feuds, and all the things that warm the young folk's heart. But moreover, it is about the power of change and friendship in a time when the world was about to shift to a new era. It is also the story of a man. A man of rules and rules. A nobleman that nobody would dare cross. He was born as Getz von Nebelstein, but everyone knew him by his name in combat, Getz with the Iron Fist. On one fateful day, Getz's life was about to take an unexpected turn. It's mm, cute. Chapter One Beaten by the rough seas, but with an eager expression on their faces, Getz and King Maximilian set foot on the beach. Their plan worked out exactly as intended, and battle was already in full motion when they started pushing forward through enemy lines. It was time to teach these barren fells no goods a lesson for all lifetime. No one disobeys the king, especially not a family of fishmongers. While kicking armored buttocks and dodging narrow volleys, Getz looked up to the castle smiling and knew that it won't be long until he will clink glasses with Maximilian on its battlements. He just lived the best life, thought Getz. Hmm. Love the artwork and the voiceover. It's nice. And these, this is adorable. Okay. Safe travel, not save travel. I'm not sure, right? Okay, so I guess. Hmm. 
bothering me a little that it says save travel instead of safe travel. Love the art. Do I have more than oh? Feathers in <laughs> Defeat all adversaries. Uh oh. I can't. This He's gonna go over. The I see. Wait, he's gonna <laughs> go. He's gonna go that way. Oh. 
Okay, so I see. I still only control one, but they I have to... did it again. The castle was taken, the rebels detained, and the kingdom was safe once again. There was nothing in this world that could stop the force that was the Royal Knights, united under the banner of the one true king and his most trusted friend. Yetz was staring at the endless horizon and imagined the glorious adventures to come. So yeah, I think I only control one character. I'm not sure if there's any ever a point where I can control more. I guess we'll see. Because there the other guy already had a predetermined path. What are the feathers doing? Twenty years later. It was a sunny morning at Nebelstein Castle. A spring breeze flowed around the snuggled up Getz, who overdid celebrating with his men in the four legged fowl last night. Getz dreamed one of his favorite dreams. He and the king storm Barenfell's castle side by side, and with the full commitment of their lives, a rest. The Grand Duke of Ersmark. Suddenly, the door to his bedchamber burst open, and Rudolfo strutted in, a bucket full of water in one hand and an important looking letter in the other. Rudolfo was not only the captain of Getz's troops, but also his right hand and best friend, a real nobleman and loyal to Getz down to his bones. Wake up, you sleepyhead! A letter from the king! With messenger and seal and everything! A flood of cold mountain water tore Getz out of his dreams. Who? What? Where? Halt! You have to see that, Getz. Eternal peace in the country! The king proclaims eternal peace in the country! You know what that means? <laughs> no more fighting and feuds, my old friend. Throughout the Empire, anyone who protests against it must expect penalties from the very top. Uh, <laughs> it almost seems like he's serious this time. Um, but, well, here, <laughs> see for yourself. What? Show me! Snorting and soaking wet, Getz seizes the document. Eternal peace. Punishment? Unlawful? Lance connects! After reading the letter, Getz just sat there for a moment and stared into space, as if he was wondering if he could still be dreaming. He can't be serious! With my honor, he cannot be serious! What do you suggest, boss? Rodolfo, the crossbow! I have to think. With a determined look and a dripping dressing gown, Getz moved in the direction of the Nebelstein Forest. Hmm. Oh, 
Why can't I go that way? Oh. What? Hold on. But to destroy it. I don't know if there's a move count I should be concerned with. Like, should I be able to do it and your moves? Whenever Getz had to think, he went to the Nebelsting Forest to hunt. Eternal peace! Ha! When did peace ever bring food to our plates? That's just a fleeting brain fart from one of these juryman courtiers who swarm around the king day and night like insidious weasels. For Getz, Peace meant that he was no longer allowed to do what he had been doing all day as a knight since the Great War. Hitting other dukes on the head on behalf of other dukes, attacking a fat-tailed traitor here, kidnapping a princess there, or stealing an artifact or two. Yes, there really was enough to do. And of course, no one wanted to get their hands dirty with these things. And even if they wanted to, there wasn't a knight as quick-witted as Getz at every street corner. While Getz was still busy scuffling loudly about the conditions at the royal court, suddenly a big sow jumped right in front of his nose and stared at him for a moment before trying to find her salvation in the distance with clattering hooves. Ha <laughs> ha! Goody goody! Stay here, you fine specimen of an animal! Getz hastily put on the crossbow but the sow knows her hunter and hits the next blackberry bush with skillful hooks. <laughs> well, wait, Kunigundi. This time you won't escape me. Hmm. I don't know what the feathers mean. While Getz prowled through the light-drenched thicket on Kundi Gundi's heels, his morning resentment was about to get carried away by the scent of fresh spring grasses and herbs. However, a moment later, a bushy worry line settled deep in his face again. What should someone do when his services as a knight are no longer needed? Since the siege of Protzenberg, more than six years have passed. Since then, Getz had not heard from his friend and King Maximilian. Did he just forget about him, he thought? My men and my peasants look up to me as a knight. Nobody likes to be in the wake of a retired cripple. And when the good Getz doesn't bring any more Tharus home, these pocket drainers are gone faster than the bill dodger after the bash. Listen. Sensual grunts echoed in the distance, and grounds gets back in the here and now. It sounded as if Kuni Gundi was taking a carefree refreshment on a particularly barked beech tree. That's right, my pretty. Don't move from this spot.
Just do. So put on aim. Ah! This pig is luckier than a buoyant witch. Gets threw down his crossbow furiously. Ah, a weapon for real scallywags in the name of the gods. Gets couldn't imagine why the king would want to equip a whole army of yokels with crossbows and lances instead of trusting his knights. After all, Gets thought that a knight would be worth at least as much as 100 of these farmhands in chainmail. Kunigundi had seized the opportunity and diluted quickly. In the distance, Getz could hear the rushing water of the Great Crow River. Delighted by the idea of putting the tubby Kunigundi on its bank, he hurried straight after it. Oh wait, Kunigundi! The two of us aren't finished with each other yet! Old Get still has it! Spluttering and full of anticipation, Getz dashed out of a bush, but almost fell over because one of his feet was already sinking in the riverbed of the Crow River. This morning, the river is as cold and unsparing as the bureaucrats at the king's court, thought Getz. With his iron fist, he got hold of a low-hanging branch and retreated ashore only to see who was feasting on a willow herb root on the other bank. How on earth did you get over there, you wondrous animal? If I didn't know better, I would think you had conspired against me with the rest of the world today. There was nothing around it. Getz had to go through the river. How good that he was so hardened by the revolting city's campaigns in 1496 that this river could not harm him. At the time, he had to swim through the great linworm in order to be able to stand by the king in time for the Battle of Spieshagen. Whenever Getz thought of the adventures with his king, his heart became very warm. Okay. 
go this way to the No. Boy, I don't understand. Oh my god. I don't know what to do. Um... supposed to work. Sure work, right? Get slowly stuck Kunigundi, who was still eating with relish. A truly majestic animal, which Gats found even more stunning up close. But this time, he was sure the last hour would have struck for Kunigundi. Suddenly, and without warning, it snapped loudly. The hunter and the hunted are so frightened that they both have a panic-like reflex to flee. 
But when Gats starts to run, he is jerked back onto the forest floor to find his arm stuck in a trap. Jagged metal teeth had dug into the metal of his iron fist and held him in place. He only knew such traps from sieges and found them abhorrent. Ha! A weapon that only cowards use. For the strong gets, it was easy to free himself from the trap. But Kunigundi was nowhere to be seen. All right, I'm gonna take a break here, but cute game that's gets. Check it out. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks. Bye bye.